somewhere. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created. We fought the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. I was proven to be telling the truth, and they were proven to be liars. Huh. Once again, that will happen. Uh, when I testify, we get the whole story, and it will be definitively clear that what I said was true, and that whatever happened to them, which is it's unfortunate if other people overreacted, but everything I said about them is true. Wow. Don't so Rudy actually stood there on the courthouse steps and said that what he had said about Shea Moss and uh, uh, his, her mother, Ruby Freeman, uh, was true. It was true. So, I mean, why then did you um, actually admit that you defamed them? Why then was it, uh, you know, like a walk in the park? It was a, it was a piece of cake to get you, uh, you know, uh, to the bar of justice as being liable for defaming them, for maliciously and knowingly telling lies that you knew to be lies about them. What is that? What is that? Okay, well, we'll all find out when he testifies, everybody. We'll all find out when Rudy testifies in his own defense, in his own trial against uh, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. Giuliani did not testify today oh. after insisting that he would do so, backing out just at the last minute with no real explanation about why. He also apparently didn't pay very close attention to the closing arguments that were made <laughs> by the lawyer representing Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, the mother and daughter that a judge has already said he defamed. <laughs> Instead, for more than an hour, Giuliani sat intently reading news stories on his laptop, okay. which was propped up on the defense table. The former election workers are each asking for at least $24 million in reputational damages oh. after they were falsely accused of committing election fraud. Their lawyer said he'll leave it to the jury to consider just how much Giuliani should be ordered to pay for those damages. So Rudy never took the stand at all after giving, you know, the press this uh, uh, the, the, this this upcoming hype, you know, that you will see the truth, you will know the truth in his, uh, you know, fancy schmancy press conference that he had. I, the only press conference I'm aware of that Rudy Giuliani ever did that was, you know, worse than this one, Four Seasons. Anybody? Everybody? The Four Seasons landscape? That that wasn't, um, you know, it, 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 was, it was nearly as humiliating, but it wasn't as expensive. So we're all sitting here on Tinder hooks, whatever that means. I read it somewhere. Um, and we're all sitting here, you know, uh, waiting to hear what the jury decides to give to Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman for their pain and suffering, their loss of, the, uh, uh, of their freedom of movement, their loss uh, of ability to stay in their own homes, scaring the bejesus out of them, the uh, amount of harassment that they had to endure. You know, Rudy's entire defense is, I didn't, I, I didn't uh, you know, leave those messages. Wasn't me on those, you know, I can't help what other people do when I post, uh, you know, uh, defamatory statements about Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman on my social media accounts, which are followed by millions of maggots. I can't stop them from being violent. I can't, uh, you know, no, maybe you couldn't stop them, for, but you could stop giving them ammunition for their, uh, you know, guns. See, that's what defamation is. And so, uh, honestly, the bottom line, it, it's, it's time to put up or shut up, Rudy. And, you know, you didn't put up. Uh, you, do, you just sat there. And, 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 you know, he's sitting there like um, they say, Caitlin Collins there on CNN says, uh, you know, he was, you know, on his laptop reading news. I wouldn't be surprised if he was looking at nudes of Hunter Biden going, damn, I had him by the proverbial hair. And I didn't get him, and now they're getting me. Damn. Proving that Rudy Giuliani is, at the end of life, a confused old wacko. Or a drunk. I don't know. I don't know which it is. But um, <laughs> Rudy's lawyer made the, the case that here, here's this case. He said, Rudy Giuliani shouldn't be defined by what happened in recent times. That's quite a defense, isn't it? How would you like for your lawyer to stand up and say, 
you know, Tom, uh, Tom didn't uh, doesn't deserve to be defined by, you know, uh, what he did to uh, these people recently. Tom doesn't deserve to be defined by the murder of his, uh, you know, uh, brother or his wife. Or Tom doesn't deserve to be defined by the terrorism that he just uh, engaged in. Tom isn't. You have to judge him by the good stuff he did in his life. <laughs> really? That's what he said. Rudy Giuliani shouldn't be defined by what's happened in recent times. This is a man who did great things. Yes, and O.J. Simpson won the Heisman Trophy, but he still murdered Nicole and Ron Brown. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's how he will be remembered, not as a Heisman Trophy winner, but uh, and, and Rudy will not be remembered as, uh, you know, uh, New York's mayor or, or, or some, you know, a... Uh, 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 great prosecutor he's going to be remembered as donald trump's personal attorney who had to humiliate and 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 cheat uh ordinary people in order to make you believe something that was untrue and he didn't give a damn what happened to those people that he was feeding into the machine of social media uh and 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 putting up you know this is really sad so shay moss you know she's the daughter shay moss uh, she, she told a story in court the other day about how, you know, she lost her ability to make a living because uh, she was a, a, an election worker and she lost her ability to do that. And so she applied for a job at Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. And um, when she got to Chick-fil-A, the manager that was interviewing her for a position at Chick-fil-A literally pulled out of uh, his, I don't know if it was his desk drawer or a cash register where he was interviewing her, but he pulled out of a drawer of some sort a photo of herself, a photo of her, and showed it to her, and on the photo was written the word fraud. So here this, this person who did everything right, okay? She was, by all accounts, a, a great model citizen. Uh, she is a good daughter. She is obviously a nice person. She's polite. She's humble, okay? And, and she... She needs to be trolled while applying for a job at Chick-fil-A because of Rudy and Donald Trump, who did call her out, uh, not her, her mother, by name. By name. There is nowhere I feel safe. Nowhere. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? Freeman and Shay Freeman Moss and one other gentleman, quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they are vials of heroin or cocaine. Ruby Freeman, uh, she's a vote scammer, a professional vote scammer and oh my hustler. God. Wow. I've lost my name. And I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security. Mm-hmm. All because a group of people, starting with number 45 mm-hmm. and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me and my daughter, Shay. I just don't do nothing anymore. I don't want to go anywhere. I second guess everything that I do. The FBI informed me that I needed to leave my home for safety. Uh, a lot of threats, um, wishing death upon me. Oh my God. Saying things like, be glad it's 2020 and not 1920. Ms. Moss, I understand that people once uh, showed up at your grandmother's house. They just started pushing their way through, claiming that they were coming in to make a citizen's arrest. Mr. Giuliani accused you and your mother of passing some sort of USB drive to each other. Uh, what was your mom actually handing you on that video? A ginger mint. Can you believe this? I mean, I, I, I hope they come back with a humongous number. Not that Rudy will be able to pay. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for long. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. He died, you racist. You're a f***ing you whore. You're going to jail, Ruby.
You're gonna get locked up, Ruby. You're all going to f***ing jail, you piece of f***ing sh**. Hey, b I hope you like jail because that's where you're going on your way to hell. Can you imagine? So this is what I'm telling you. You know, Republicans are not afraid of Donald Trump. What Republicans are afraid of is the social media following that follows guys like Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani and Steve Bannon and, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the, the Miller guy, OK, uh, who is a, 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 a died in the wool. I mean, this this is a self-loathing Jew. I mean, this this uh, uh, Miller guy who wants to put uh, people in camps. I mean, this is his idea uh, to put people round them up around the country using using the United States military. Yeah, deploy the United States military on American soil to round people up and put them in ca in concentration camps. I don't know what else to call them, okay? And this is what Stephen Miller uh, envisions for the United States of America. This is what Donald Trump wants to do. This is what Rudy Giuliani is, is hoping for so that Rudy Giuliani can, uh, you know, never have to, you know, face the bar of justice ever again. I, I, I'm telling you, th this is an evil lot. This is a really sick bunch who don't care, you know, like uh, what they have to shove what they have to put into the oven, uh, what they have to burn, and who they have to burn in order to achieve their goal of fascism, to achieve their goal of never, ever being held responsible for any of their criminal behavior, for any of their fraud, for any of their, you know, uh, uh, targeting of people, for any of their lies, for any of their, you know, uh, uh, ruining of people's lives, simply because they were convenient. They were convenient to point at these two women and say they're passing vials of crack around or they're passing vials. You know what I'm saying? And so Rudy's lawyer is going, hey, you know, listen, uh, you know, don't judge him by what he's just done. Wow. You know, that, that's kind of what you say in a closing argument when you have no closing argument. That's kind of what you say when you're a defense attorney and you have no freaking defense because your client is so disgusting and your client is such a miscreant and your client is so obviously guilty of what he's charged with, of what he's been found liable for. Uh, and, and so, you know, the, the, the lawyer for uh, Shea Moss and the lawyer for um, Ruby Freeman uh, actually said, actually said, send a message to Mr. Giuliani. Uh, his name is Michael Gottlieb. He said, send a message to Mr. Giuliani and send it to any other powerful figure with a platform and an audience who is considering whether they will take the chance to seek profit and fame by assassinating the moral character of ordinary people. That is so succinct and such a good summation of what Trump and his crew do to ordinary people. They use them. They abuse them. They, they, do you remember, what was, what was her name, Carmona? Uh, it, I have an affidavit, and I saw them, and they brought in, you know, uh, they were lunch trucks, and they brought in the ballots. They brought them in. You know, I mean, it's just like he will find any wacko. He will find any delusional person, anybody looking for their 15 minutes of fame, anybody at all that's loyal to Trump, any cult member, anybody at all to say any damn thing and ruin the good names and the lives of ordinary good citizens, civil servants, people who volunteer to do work for a uh, free and fair election so that it can occur. You know, and... Uh, I, they, they are asking each of them for $24 million a piece. Now, here's the sick part, okay? If the jury comes back and throws the book at Rudy and anybody else that uh, Rudy hangs with, in order to send this message, don't mess with the people because the people can mess with you while they're still a democracy, okay? While we're still, you know, uh, let's say in flux, on our way to fascism, we still have functioning courts. We still have judges who judge uh, uh, fairly. We still have juries that can render correct and good verdicts. You know, uh, we can still do that. And so Rudy Giuliani's lawyer said, don't land, I swear to God, this is his defense, don't land on a catastrophic amount. I'm asking you to be reasonable. This is what Mr. Sibley, Joe Sibley, the, 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 he has a numeral. He has a numeral. This is how important Joe Sibley is. He has a numeral. He's Joe Sibley the fourth. <laughs> the fourth. I mean, I could see the third, you know, junior we get. The third. The fourth, really? Give it up. Okay? He said, I'm asking you to be reasonable. He said, 
Mr. Giuliani, and this is why what Rudy Giuliani says on the courthouse steps is such a sham and such a scam and such a continuation of his drunk behavior or his wacko behavior or whatever you want to, uh, you know, deduce is the cause of his bad behavior because I'm not sure what's causing it. Uh, But he said, Mr. Giuliani, this is his own lawyer, has admitted that he was wrong. Mr. Giuliani has admitted that what he does did was wrong. I was proven to be telling the truth, and they were proven to be liars. What? Once again, that will happen. What? Uh, when I testify, we get the whole story, and it will be definitively clear that what I said was true, and that whatever happened to them, which is it's unfortunate for other people to overreact, but everything I said about them is true. They were passing around something other than a ginger mint, Mr. Giuliani. They were rigging an election. They were scammers. They were um, scam artists. They were grifters. That's what Donald Trump called them. Donald Trump said they were involved in a criminal enterprise, that it was uh, Ruby Freeman. I remember taking calls about Ruby Freeman. I was like, who? Yeah, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss and one other man. They were engaged in a conspiracy to defraud. They were engaged in a conspiracy to steal. They were engaged in a conspiracy to lie. They were uh, fraudsters. They were grifters. They were a uh, conspir- you know, they were uh, con-, con people, con men. According to the president of the United States and his attorney, Rudy Giuliani. I mean, can you imagine being targeted like that? in a heated moment that we were in, like that, that ended up being violent? Because back then we were just wondering, you know, if anybody would really do violence, even though they were threatening to do it, would they do it? And then we saw January 6th, and now we have freaking Republicans trying to tell you don't believe your own eyes. Don't even believe what you saw. Don't believe that you saw police officers being beaten. Don't believe that you saw police officers being crushed. Don't believe that you saw people breaking windows. Don't believe any of that. Don't believe what the jury found was true and factual. Believe me when I tell you, police, Vivek Ramaswamy, remember, police let them in. This was an inside job. The FBI did this. I'm immersed in this story now. I've done all the factual research. I can tell you without shame, without a pause, it was an inside What? Almost a thousand people went to jail. Okay, and there's no evidence at all to prove that it was an inside job, none. But okay, so this is what they're gonna do. They're gonna gaslight an entire country again. Just as we're starting to see a little bit of justice. Many years after the fact, yes, but a little bit of justice for people who were irreparably deprived of their good names and their reputations of being good, upstanding, hardworking American citizens. Connect. To speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Oh, this is big. This is big. This is bigger than both of us, Brett. This is huge. This is gigantic. Uh, okay. So I actually had to uh, do math. I had to actually write numbers down so that I would uh, be able to follow this because it's huge. Okay. So today is the last day of the Free Speech TV Winter Pledge Drive. Thank you so much for donating if you already have. If you haven't, today is the most amazing day I have ever seen in the entire time that I have been pitching for Free Speech TV. And that is what this is. This is a pitch during a pledge drive, okay? Uh, It is triple match day. Triple match day and your last chance to actually give. Okay, so this is it. This is the last day of the Winter Pledge Drive. And your year-end gift to Free Speech TV, just so you know, is tax-deductible because we are a not-for-profit. We're a 501c4 company, and so you can actually use whatever you donate to Free Speech TV as a tax deduction. Now, for two weeks, we've been talking about, you know, this uh, pledge drive, and you're probably wondering how much have we raised. Well, you know, you can find out anytime you want to by visiting us at freespeech.org slash donate. The numbers are, are right there on your screen. And then you can make your year-end gift uh, to Free Speech TV. So don't wait because you, you're out of time. Now, what does four, what does, uh, sorry, triple match day mean? Okay, so like I said, I had to write it down. I had to do the math. 
So what it means is that the frontline funders, the people who put their money where our mouths are each and every quarter to help us do more challenges for you and to make your money go further, each and every pledge drive have decided that they were going to triple match whatever amount you could give today. So if you gave $25, obviously it would be 100 Did I do this right? I don't know if I did this right. See, now I'm all nervous. It's uh, you're, $100 means $400, right? $400. That's, that's what we discussed. That, 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 that's like, it's so amazing. I can't even like make myself say that that's the case, but that's the case. That is the case. So $25 becomes $100, right? Is that right? Bing. Okay, good. And so here are the numbers I wrote down. I, I, you, you know, you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I, I can't do math. So $100 is $400, right? $400 is $1,200. That's like amazing. $1,000, if you're so inclined, would be $4,000. And if you wanted to give $5,000 today, you'd only have to pony up a measly $1,666.66. And that would be a $5,000 donation to Free Speech TV because of the frontline funders matching three times what you give. I mean, that's just... Then, of course, you know, if you're, if, if you're interested in a smaller number, 75 is good. It equals 300. So uh, very, uh, very amazing day. And all you have to do is go to freespeech.org slash donate or give a call to 877-378-8669. And that will put you in touch with somebody in Denver, Colorado, who is working today uh, and whose salary you are attempting to pay. That is what these pledge drives are all about. And the people that work there, I think you know by now, that uh, you know, run this independent media outlet are constantly looking for um, you know, new shows. They're making sure our shows are distributed properly to the places that you watch them on. So you know, they make sure that the shows are on Sling and Roku and uh, you know, maybe your, your, your uh, DirecTV and your Dish Network, Apple TV, all these uh, different endpoints. And you know, we're sitting in one place, and they make sure everything gets where you want it to be each and every day. So that's who you're supporting with your donation today. We can't do it without you, we can't. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's to our democracy, one that works for all of us, okay? Thanks again. James in Iowa. Yes, Randy, I'm a long time listener and monthly donor. Yay. I want to read to you a couple sentences of Republican Post today online. Okay. He said, the Republican Party We'll never wash the Donald Trump stain he put on the party. Who said that? And I want to I want to take that a step further. Wait, wait, say, wait, wait. Back up. Who said that? I was. It was just some. It wasn't anybody official. Ah. It was just an observation by a Republican, and and it spot on. Okay. But I want to take I want to take that a step further, and 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 say the Republican Party and Donald Trump. Will never wash the stain they both placed on America. History will remind us of that forever. Yeah, they are a stain. There's a, that's the best way to describe Absolutely. it. Absolutely, and and that's all I have. But I wanted to let you know that I have a great Christmas and know you are loved and respected by your listeners. Thank you. Go caucus. <laughs> okay. <All right>. Thank <laughs> okay, you. Bye. bye. Yeah, the caucuses are uh, like right around the corner. You're not even going to believe how fast this election season is going to creep up. It's going to start. In, in, in earnest. And, uh, you know, that's another thing. Free speech TV, we're down for it. We're ready. Tony in Las Vegas. Hey, Randy. Hi. I'm also a monthly subscriber. Yay. Five bucks only. Sorry. Perfect. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but I love you guys. Um, you, um, you know, this Rudy Giuliani thing, I think it's important that um, he gets uh, the, the book thrown at him and, and put him as an example to everybody else, because everybody else has been doing it. I mean, Donald Trump has been um, defaming uh, all these people without any consequences at all. They, I mean, they are treating him, and they are with white gloves, as they say, and, uh, and I know I heard that before in in the media. Um, he needs to be set, uh, Rudy Giuliani, needs to be um, pay for what he did to these people. I mean, they are not able to work as you 
as as you've shown. Yeah. I mean, Chick Fil A. Are you kidding me? You can't get a job at Chick Fil A. What a disgusting thing! You go in for a job at Chick Fil A because you can't do what you used to do because you're you you, you can't show your face anymore because people want to hurt you, and so you say, "I got to work. I go to Chick Fil A. I'll I'll put in an application." And the guy who's taking your Chick Fil A application. <laughs> takes a photo of you out of his drawer and shows it to you, and uh, upon it is written the word fraud? Really? It is insanity. This is not. This, this should not be allowed to be done to anybody. I mean, um, whether it is because of the election or whether well, it is for any other you know, reason. The idea... In, in America is you don't um, you, you, you don't do thought crime, right? So we don't punish people uh, ahead of things. But after they do these things, that's why the president, think about this. The president, the former president of the United States of America is a, he is a, a, a charged felon out on bail who has mm -hmm. several gag orders, court ordered because he can't stop defaming a judge's law clerk. Yeah. You know, I mean... Who's also getting desperate. Right. Right. And everywhere they go, and everyone they target gets death threats And everywhere they go. And these, these were the leaders of the free world and his lawyer? And his lawyer. At least Rudy lost his law license, okay? Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, he should... Uh, yeah, Donald Trump should not be allowed to get anywhere near the Oval Office or, or anywhere near in, to be in the running for all the stuff that he is causing. I think the only thing he needs to be near is, uh, you know, an ankle bracelet while he's out on bail. The man is, is he is so unhinged and they are so without integrity. It's the Randy Rhodes Show. Yeah. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Oh, everybody, let's take a walk down memory lane. See, yeah, you, you, can you see her? Oh, yeah, baby. Look, there's Rudy. There's Rudy. The, the, poll, book, the poll book is completely off. <laughs> completely off. Off that at 30,000? I'd say that poll book is off by over a hundred thousand. <laughs> that poll book. Why don't you look at the registered voters on there? How many registered voters are on there? Did you do you even know the answer to that? So, no, I guess it's, I'm trying to get to the bottom zero. of this here. Zero. Zero. There's zero. So, my question then <laughs> is, if the guess how many? Wait. What about what about how what what, what about the turnout oh, rate? A hundred and twenty percent. Let's uh, let's let Representative Johnson ask his plastic question. So, <laughs> so the poll book number, okay, there, there's two things that could happen here. Either the poll book number, if, if ballots were called multiple, multiple times, there, there's two options. Option number one is that the poll book numbers are not going to match. They the, don't. The actual. Not by thousands and thousands of votes. That's not what we see right now. You that, take a look again. One. Take a look again. Option number two <laughs> is that they essentially were, were filling in names of people who didn't vote. That, Dead that, people, too? So is that, Let's I guess, let is that Representative your Johnson ask his question, and then when I he's done. I thought that was his answer. Okay. Well, I guess that, that's uh, well, my, my question here is why we're not seeing the poll book off by 30,000 votes. That, that's not the what case. What did you guys do? Take it and uh, do something crazy to it? <laughs> I'm just saying the numbers are not off by 30,000 votes. So I know what are you I saying saw. that they're filling in? I know what names? I saw, and I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Okay. Did you? Okay, we're, we're, I think, I'm just trying I to ask you a me, uh, legitimate question here. Yeah, let's let Representative Johnson ask his question, and then don't interrupt him. And then, okay. and then if you want to respond to it, that's fine. And, uh, did you have more representative? Yeah, I guess I just want to keep following back up with the poll book. So are we saying <laughs> that the poll book is either wildly off or that they are, that they are filling in names? It's wildly off and dead people voted and uh, illegals voted. Okay. <laughs> okay, somebody somebody tell me what the number is, okay? How many drinks did Melissa Carone and Rudy Giuliani have before they went to testify to the Michigan State Legislature. How many drinks? 
I swear you just plucked that from my brain. She sounds like every drunk girl that just got kicked out of the bar and she's <laughs> arguing on her way out. Get your hands <laughs> off me. This is America. <laughs> and they pick you up by the back of your, your uh, pants they, with the belt loop right, and, and they just get you like up and get whoop. you out. Yes. Bye-bye, Melissa. Bye-bye. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you, Miss Corona. I signed something that said that if I'm lying, I go to jail. You know what actually happened to her? Do you? She didn't go to jail. She decided to run. She decided to run for Congress. That's how it went to her, uh, you know, freaking brain, this appearance on the TV. Now, a normal human being would have been so humiliated that every time they thought about that, every time they even remembered it, they'd get the Udi Gats in their belly. Do you know what I mean? Like you would get this, the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it would be like the most embarrassing moment of your life. The day you got drunk with Rudy Giuliani and decided to testify to the Michigan State Legislature that 30,000 people who were dead or illegal or some other damn thing uh, voted when they should not have voted. I mean, It's so incredible to me. It's just like the most amazing thing. And none of the people, none of the people around Donald Trump or Donald Trump himself have any shame about any lie they have ever told, whether it hurt somebody, it didn't hurt somebody, whether it was illegal to do. And, you know, now uh, this this is amazing. You know, Robin, my friend in uh, Harlem, she said to me, this is the best argument I've ever heard about how it is impossible for Donald Trump or any president to be immune from criminal prosecution for anything they do, anything, while they're president. This is what Donald Trump is arguing, right? Donald Trump is arguing that, uh, you know, uh, inciting a violent uh, insurrection or praising insurrectionists on the back end or not doing his duty to protect and defend the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, once he learned if he had to be informed and, and taught and told that there was violence going on at the Capitol and that a woman had already died. Uh, one woman was, uh, you know, literally trampled, okay? Uh, and another woman, uh, as we all know, uh, Ashley was shot, right? And so the president knew that there were dead people involved in this, uh, and he still refused to do anything, anything at all, okay? So whether you think he was responsible at the front end, in the middle, or on the back end, and then telling the people who did the violence that he loved them, which is aiding and abetting and showing, uh, you know, that's, that's giving comfort, comfort, you know, telling somebody you love them is comforting them, right? There's no argument there, is there? Is there? Okay. So, because <laughs> if you have an argument about that, I, I don't even want to know you. You, you. you would make my skin crawl, okay? Because your concept of uh, support, love, and comfort is alien, and I'd like to keep it that way. But, you know, that's illegal too, giving aid and comfort to insurrectionists, okay? Donald Trump is arguing that because he did it while he was president, this is the Nixon argument, that when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. So Robin said, she was telling Howard, and Howard passed it on to me. Robin said, you know what that means? That means that Joe Biden, what? Yeah. It means that Joe Biden, the current president of the United States of America, can go and uh, kidnap Donald Trump. He can throw him in jail wrongfully. He can, you know, uh, do violence against him. He can actually kill him. He can shoot him on Fifth Avenue. He can shoot him in, in, in the White House. He can invite him to, uh, you know, uh, uh, the State of the Union. He can make him stand up and just, you know, kill him on TV in front of millions of viewers during a State of the Union speech if he wants to, and nothing could happen to him. You know why? You know why? Because he's immune to criminal prosecution while he's president, while he's president. You see what I mean there? When you actually look at her all these uh, years later, when you actually see Rudy Giuliani on TV yesterday telling you, or the day before, telling you he's going to testify and you will know that he told the truth about Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman, that he said that what they were doing was passing around heroin or crack cocaine or whatever the hell welfare queen, uh, 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 you know, uh, thought process he went through in order to come up with his, uh, you know, uh, illustration of what he said they were doing when it was really a ginger mint. And then he didn't testify because he knew he was lying all along. He knew and he couldn't get on the stand because if he did, then they would find him guilty of perjury on top of money damages, okay? And so he couldn't testify and he knew he couldn't testify and he had no intention of testifying and he didn't testify in his own defense. 
And when Donald Trump, okay, this is this is really uh, unbelievable. So th- this is recent too. I mean, when you when you look at the recent lies, it's just it, it sends chills down your spine. So this was uh, what two days ago when he was in uh, Coralville, um, Iowa. The president, the former president. Uh, this is what he said about our economy, right? Right. This is it. Gasoline prices are now five, six, seven dollars, and even eight dollars a gallon. By contrast. Under the Trump leadership, my leadership, inflation was non-existent, and we had gasoline down to a dollar eighty-seven a gallon. Doesn't that sound beautiful? Beautiful. You know, he thinks he's Polly, right? She's going to come home. I know just how to talk to her. She's going to come home, and I'm going to tell her everything's going to be okay, and it's all going to be everything's going to be beautiful. And then you and Karen are going to go on a little vacation, going to go to Florida, and you're going to do a little something for me. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, gas was never. The average price of a gallon of gas in this country was never $1.87 while Donald Trump was president. The average price of a gallon of gasoline while Donald Trump was president was two eighty three. Okay, that's, uh, you know, less than now. But honestly, gas does not cost 4 5 6 $7 anymore. Okay, it doesn't. The, the national average for the price of gasoline is uh, $2.83. That's the average. Uh, 60% of states are below $3.00. 20, uh, I'm sorry, are below uh, the national average. And 25% of states are below $3. Now, I happen to live in a state where it is below $3. I keep telling you, I look every single day for the price of gas, right? I look at the most expensive gas station that I know of, and I look at the most uh, economic, uh, economically viable gas station, okay? And gas is below $3. It's somewhere, somewhere between, depends on which one you're looking at. It's between $2.99 and $2.89, Sometimes 282. And then all of a sudden the sign will change. <laughs> now, I, I don't, why, why is he lying like that? I mean, the economy is booming. It's doing better than any of the other G7 countries' economy. I mean, we are an outstanding country of all the countries, of all the economic uh, prowess countries, of all the economically gifted countries where our recovery is the best one on the planet and it's the most equitable one on the planet wages are up inflation is down interest rates on mortgages are down they're below seven percent again uh the fed told you yesterday jerome powell said he's looking at two more rate cuts which means go buy a house finance it with an adjustable rate mortgage and then when the two rate cuts come next year, you'll be the beneficiary uh, beneficiary of them or wait till next year. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Changes come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. If you're looking for a break from inflation, you may not have to search any farther than the gas pump, where oh. millions of Americans are now paying $3 or less a gallon. Oh. Here's Tom Costello. From the Lone Star State to highways across the country, finally some inflation relief at the gas pump. A lot better than last year. It's all about supply and demand. Demand usually falls during colder months when people stay home. And right now there's plenty of supply, with the U.S. making up 80% of the global increase. The right? U.S. retains the crown of the world's largest oil producer. Oil production in the U.S. is back at record-setting levels. Oh! On the global market, oil is now selling for $77 a barrel, down from 123 oh. in June of last year. Mm. At the pump, gas has dropped to 322 a gallon nationally, 28 cents cheaper than last year. 16 states are now paying $3 or less. 25,000 gas stations at 275 or less. So oh. higher taxes means gas can be $2 more expensive out west. Oh. oh. <laughs> what, I, 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 I'm sorry, Donald, uh, what did you say? Gasoline prices are now 5 6 $7 and even $8 a gallon. By contrast, under the Trump leadership, my leadership, inflation was non-existent, and we had gasoline down to a dollar eighty-seven a gallon. Doesn't that sound beautiful? Is any of that beautiful. true? Any of that true? No, none of that is true. None of it. 
not what he had it down to, not what it is now, nothing. Nothing he says is true. These are shameless freaks of nature, okay? These are people who want you to not believe your own eyes and your own ears, your own sense, your own sense. I mean, you know, you could be in a car right now driving past a gas station in one of the states where gasoline in 25% of the states, 25% of the states have gasoline on sale today at below $2.75 a gallon, okay? 60% of the country has gas prices below $3 a gallon. An idiot boy is standing there in a place where they're going to caucus, okay? They're about to have a caucus. In a Republican National Conve- uh, you know, uh, Caucus. Uh, and he's lying to their faces about the cost of gas. And you know what? Even if they're in their car, with the very few exceptions of, uh, you know, my Iowa uh, fan base, which is, uh, you know, I'm grateful for it. I really am. Because I love your state. You know I do. I've always loved your state. From the minute I set foot in your rolling hills, and the minute I ate your pork, I was like, this is where you could go and live forever and be corn-fed and happy. But anyway, I digress. Uh, They could be driving by the gas station right now and hear him say that gas is five, six, seven, eight dollars. Look at the pump, see that it's two dollars and seventy-five cents and falling and believe him. And believe him. Someone's going to have to explain to me how that works. Because, you know, it is a thing. It is a thing. Honestly, Randy, I'm at the point where I feel like they see it and they say, well, Trump just lied to me again. Doesn't matter. He's my guy. But boy, is he telling a lot of lies now. He's a godly man. Wait, just wait, whatever happened to bearing false witness being like one of the seven deadly sins? You know, like whatever happened to the top ten? It's at least the top ten. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I honestly, I cannot figure this out. Uh, people just want to believe that he's lying for a bigger reason. That he's lying for a higher power. That he's lying for, I don't know, some, uh, some, some. Listen, and this is this is basically what happens with all cults. All cults will actually be talked into believing whatever the cult leader needs them or wants them to believe, even if it causes their own death. Okay, don't forget what the Branch Davidians were willing to uh, do. They were willing to let their children be molested, be sexually abused by David Koresh. They were willing to literally burn up in flames. They were literally willing to blockade themselves inside of a compound in Wacko. And Donald Trump, when he launched this version of the run for the presidency, not the 2016, but this one, where did he go? Where was his first stop to announce that he was running again? That's right, Waco. Do you think that was a coincidence or do you think he was mocking people who would allow their own children to be uh, abused or would listen to him lie about the weather or the cost of of gasoline or uh, Rudy Giuliani or that elections were stolen or any of these things or any of these things and and say oh I can't vote for him because you know what he has no integrity he has no character. He's a liar. He's a scammer. He's grifting again. You know, no, no. They will literally self emulate. People in a cult will literally let the cult leader brand them with hot irons, okay? They will do whatever the cult leader asks of them because they are made to believe that that person who identifies themselves as the leader is privileged to a, a higher voice that's talking only to him. And that higher voice is saying, tell your people to drink the Kool-Aid. Tell them to die. Life will be better in the next life. Tell your people to let themselves be burned to death by the United States military because they're serving a higher purpose. Tell your followers to let their children be used as, uh, you know, uh, whatever we want to use them for. Whatever. Because they're serving a higher power. And that is really what he has going for him. 
because normal people would be driving by the gas station, listening to him two days ago tell them that gas is five, six, seven, eight dollars a gallon. Look at the pump and say, no, it's two seventy five. And say, why is he lying to me? But cult people don't. And that's what's so dangerous about all of this. All of this. And when you hear him tell them that he's their retribution, or he, you know, and and you know that all he's doing is trying to keep himself out of jail by shrouding himself uh, and protecting himself in the bubble of the presidency again because of that OLC opinion that says you can't indict a sitting president. And he is indicted. And so he, he's indicted in four different jurisdictions. He's got 91 felony charges. He's out on bail. Just, just process that. He's out on bail, okay? And he's defaming court clerks. Again, it's the Shea Mosses and the Ruby Freemans and the little people and, and the using and the abusing of the Melissa Car- Carones, okay? The people who drink too much for lunch and exploiting them and getting them to perjure themselves under oath, okay? Getting them to risk their liberty for them, for their higher power, which is to keep power, right? And now they're telling you, here's what we'll do. Here's what we're going to do for you. And this is the power. This is what you want to give us. We will go and use the United States military, and we will round people up with the U.S. military on American soil. Remember Posse Comitatus? People used to call me up and go, what about Posse Comitatus? Well, it is a thing, and it means you can't use the American military on so- American soil. But, hey, all bets are off. This man is going to manipulate the entirety of the United States military power so that he can target... First identify, then target, then actually apprehend, round up, if you will, people that disagree with him, journalists that try to broadcast through all this noise the truth, people that don't support him, and people that he believes shouldn't be able to live in the United States, whether they're Muslim, the religious. Te- and think about this, okay? If he, if, if, if Jared ever lets Donald Trump down, the only reason why Donald Trump you know, says he protects, uh, you know, Israel and the Jews because Jared wants it. They fight. That's the end of that. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. If he's elected, the stock market will crash. That bell marks a new record high for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. going to close 37,000 for the first time ever. <laughs> the first time ever, ever. The stock market will crash. The stock market will crash, everybody. Here we go. Christmas is coming early here on Wall Street with the stock market hitting those new records. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at an all-time high Thursday for the second day in a row. Second day. Adding another 158 Mm -hmm. points. And when you take a step back and look at the Dow's performance so far this year, it's gained 12%. Wow. To put that into a dollar amount for the typical American's 401k that stayed invested in stocks this year, your balance is up about 13 thousand dollars oh. big picture investors are bullish because the economy is in solid shape job growth is steady and inflation is cooling which is why the fed now forecasts that it could cut interest rates three times next year three times in anticipation of that mortgage rates have just dropped below seven percent for the first time since august uh-huh. so if you are taking out a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage yeah. at today's rates your monthly payment at two thousand six hundred forty eight dollars is 230 bucks cheaper than two months ago when those rates were at eight percent still not quite that two or three percent rate that a lot of homeowners locked in but it is a sliver of relief in an incredibly challenging market and you can buy a house, okay? You can. I just, he's such a liar. I just I can't stand it. I, I just, uh, if you elect him, the stock market will crash, okay? And it'll crash at Christmas time. <laughs> I brought back Christmas. I did for white Santas only, I, is what I did. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is crazy. This is, this is just, it's, a, it's the myth, the man, the moron, Donald J. Trump. I, I honestly cannot for the life of me understand how people believe anything that comes out of that pie hole. I cannot believe it. I just don't understand it. 
Sarah in Texas. Hi, Brandy. Hey. Um, oh, I, I'm hoping that Howard is having a a, a, a positive, uh, speedy recovery. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm. I don't. Know, you hear it from a lot of people, and I'm going to mirror it. I'm so baffled. I'm. I just. I don't understand why all these people are out on bail and they're not in jail because they have they have violated everything that they're supposed to do when they're on probation or until they get their trial, but they haven't followed any of it, which, I mean, the only thing that I can equate it, which... Bring, oh, wait a, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to interrupt you, Sarah. The verdict is in on Rudy Giuliani. You, you'll never... They were asking for $24 million each, right? So that would be $48 million. The jury, they deserve it. The jury just awarded a hundred. And forty-eight million dollars, a hundred and forty-eight million dollars. Christmas came early. <laughs> Unanimous verdict. Uh huh. Eight-person jury, a unanimous verdict, $148 million. Here's how it uh, breaks that down. Yeah, really. It's unbelievable. It was very long, uh, lengthy. Compensatory damages, $16 million for Ruby, $16 million for Shea. Uh, intentional, intentional infliction of emotional distress, $20, $20 million each. And punies, you know, the punitive damages, things that will never be made right, $75 million. Wow. So, so how does that work when, I, I know, I think he's already, uh, he's, he filed for bankruptcy, right? Right, and he put his uh, his his New York condo on the market for mm-hmm. like six million dollars. So basically, what he, would happen is uh, they would attach whatever money he got from the sale to them, okay, the, to their settlement. So they would get you know the six million that he you know whatever the profit was. Uh, they, sure. And then don't forget, he does work, you know. He uh, he can't be a lawyer, but he does have a podcast. So Well, and- maybe he could go apply at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> ah, perfect. <laughs> I know. I have a dry sense of humor, but yeah, but I'll, but I'll, and why is it even <laughs> Miller in prison? And J- I mean, I, the, 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 it just goes down the line. These are, they're crooks. They're directors. I just, it, I, it baffles me. I don't understand. They should all be, they should have, um, I don't know if you ever watched Beetlejuice, but you know how there was a point and, and uh, Michael Keaton put that thing over Gina Davis's mouth so she couldn't speak. Yes. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they need. Right. We need to devise one of those. Yeah. And, and just make sure that the mouth stays sealed. Yeah. Without a zipper. Right. A zipper. That was it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I peer, I'm so glad we went through this together. Thank you. You're perfect. <laughs> you were. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, she was great. Have we considered that somebody said Rudy's name three times and all we have to do is <laughs> say it three more times and it'll just go back to hell or wherever he came from? Yeah, wherever, or the, the waiting room of death. Remember that room? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where all these people were waiting. Yeah. That was a great movie. That was a really good one. Remake coming. Yeah. Robin Mesa. Hi, Randy. Hey. It's Friday. Yeah. Uh, thank God. <laughs> hey, I was just going to do a little play on words. Um, you said that, that that's a cult, you know, and, and, and I originally said it's not a cult because these people, if, you know, Trump came up to them, wanted to grab their wife, girlfriend, or even their daughter, they'd be okay with it. They would. So that would make, that would make them cucks. <laughs> and, and, and I think, I think we're both right. It's a, it's a cult of cucks. Yeah. The cuck cult. <laughs> yeah. That's all I have. <laughs> well, it, it works better if you say the cuck first, because cuck. Cult sounds like cuck hold, which is what cuck is short for. So that works. Ah, yeah. There you go. Yep. Nice. And it's what they're afraid I, of the most, right? And and Donald Trump right. could have any of their wives any moment at any time that he wants. That fat, disgusting, you know, pasty, white, flubbery thing could actually get your wife to do whatever he wanted her to do in front of you, and you would be thrilled. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's right? fine. It's very, it, it is a cult. I mean, it's a cuck cult. That's a good one. Uh, Brother David? It's a cuck cult. I like that one a lot. I do, too. Sister Candles lighted for the Howard and you and all of us. Oh, thank you very much. It it was a frazzled festival of light, but here we are on Friday, and it is what? Triple threat? Triple match? What what, what is the— It's triple match, last day of Hanukkah, uh, Friday. There you go. Yeah. Well, this is as it should be. Um— the, as I said in the chat room, my chat room, the 
A dollar, please. Thank you, chat room. A dollar. Just a dollar. Just a dollar. It will will be four times up, and you did the math. No, no, that's Uh, that's something else. (laughs) No, that's right. That's right. The front front liners. Anyway, um, the the Rudy verdict is is a beautiful thing. Yes. Um, We ain't seen nothing yet. Why? Uh, Because the the wheels of justice are turning, even though slowly. And you, of all the things you said today that I agree with. I need the wheels to come off the clown car is what I need. Kind of sort of that election year. Oh, we have we we we, we just have to buckle up and, and push forward. Biden Harris twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah. I mean Clear listen, uh, honestly, everyone. we would be better off with, you know, um a weekend at Bernie's version of Biden over anything Donald Trump could show us or do. Do you know Pure and simple. Right. Pure and simple. Right. Done. Love you always. You too. Thank you. Yeah, gorgeous girls for everyone, not just for a few. <laughs> I'm going to make those damn gorgeous girls one of these days. I mean, I've been threatening to do it for 20 years. I still, I, you know, listen, I watched the Kardashians do it. I did. They took my idea and they came up with skims, right? I mean, it was my idea. And it was my idea years ago. But could I get, you know, one of the sharks? No. Nah. Call in, connect. Yeah. To speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. All right, everybody. This is it. This is it. This is the actual last pitch I will make for the winter 2023 free speech TV pledge drive. And it's a great one. This is a great finale to what was a, a, and is going to be uh, at the end of all things when they're said and done. Uh, a great pledge drive. This has been a really, really good one. So if you want to see, uh, you know, like um, how much we've raised, just go to freespeech.org slash donate. You'll see how much we raised. But this is it. This is the last possible uh, chance you have to do it today, which is a triple match day. I love triple match day. This is like the most amazing thing I've ever seen anybody do. You know, a lot of uh, places you see they match uh, you know, they have people who will, uh, you know, you give $5, they give $5, right? This is triple. So our frontline funders have agreed to triple whatever you do today. So $100 becomes $400 and so on and so forth. $75 is $300, you understand. Oh, $1,666.66 is $5,000. I mean, Rudy can't do, uh, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, payout. <laughs> He's broke. Oh, I love that. Anyway, uh, you can do it multiple ways. You can use this QR code at the bottom of the screen right there. See that there? Uh, and it will take you to freespeech.org slash donate. It'll take you to the donate page. You can call 877-378-8669, and you can pledge that way with a real live human that works in Denver, Colorado, where Free Speech TV is. Also, it's tax deductible because we are not for profit and it is a tax deductible gift that you would be making today. Um, And you can also text it if you want to just text FSTV to 44321, 44321. So multiple ways to uh, do it and the frontline funders will see it and they will match it three times, three times to turn $400 $400 into $1,200. I mean, it's amazing. I had to write that down. I suck at math, as we all know. But those are the numbers. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was an amazing winter pledge drive for Free Speech TV, and I'm really proud of you. So beautifully done. Mike in Florida. Uh, yes. I, I was just wanting to comment on, you know, for all the religious people out there, if us as veterans— you know, we're willing to give up our lives, and he called us suckers and losers. Right. What would he call Jesus Christ? A sucker. That's what I'm saying. Yep. So how can they how can they go beside him when he would call him a sucker and a loser? He would call him a sucker and a loser. He, that's listen, what I'm saying. And, and the other thing that's important uh, is not just that, you know, Jesus gave his life so that our sins would be forgiven, so the story goes, right? But also, uh-huh. but also the idea that Jesus— decided to let them take his life because they didn't know what they were doing to wash away our sins, right? So the whole thing was about forgiveness. The entire story was about forgiveness. Donald Trump has none of that in him. Exactly. He's all about retribution. He's all about, uh, you know, toxic resentment. I mean, he's all about making you drink the poison for him. Exactly. I mean, it's very That's what I'm talking about. How can these people stand beside him 
when he called me a sucker and a loser and you or whoever served in the military. Yeah, he did. And what, what, and what he thinks of Christ, he know, you know he's got to think the same thing. So right. how can they back him? I don't know. I mean, Mike, uh, whoever has the answer to that question understands how cults work and how to deprogram somebody, I right? I know. It's, I just like for somebody to ask him that. I would, too. I mean, because for you and me, it's way above our pay grade. That's for sure. I mean. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But good point. But I appreciate your service, too, because you're a veteran, too, aren't you? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. That's a lot. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, all right. Bye-bye. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, on, honestly, if, if you follow the through line of Donald Trump's, you know, toxic uh, resentment and his lack of the ability to forgive, which is really what, uh, you know, Jesus died. You know, the story is that he died on the cross so that you could be forgiven for whatever thing you did. Donald Trump does not believe in forgiveness. Donald Trump, his entire philosophy, and he's t he tells it to you all the time, is that if you hit him, he's going to come back and hit you harder. OK, he's going to hurt you. He's going to hit you. He doesn't believe in turning the other cheek. He certainly doesn't believe in forgiveness. And he certainly doesn't understand love. I don't think he's ever felt love. Maybe, you know, lust for, you know, his own daughter. Uh, but I don't think he really loves her. And in fact, in fact, this is why I was uh, walking up to that uh, little point there the other uh, before the break is that, you know, we don't know if Ivanka gave testimony that is damaging to Donald Trump in the January 6th matter, in the uh, Trump organization matter. We don't know what she has said behind closed doors to the House, to the, you know, uh, it, it, to, to, to prosecutors, to Fonnie Will. We don't know. We don't know. And he doesn't know. And if it turns out that she actually made a deal to save her own hide or made a deal to, you know, put an end to her torture as his daughter, whatever it is, okay, uh, because she knows that it was a quid pro quo that she was on Air Force One and went, and went to China with him and walked away with patents from President Xi, uh, and then Donald Trump was, uh, you know, uh, literally changing our policy toward China and saying, you know, he's a great guy. I, I really dig him. I really love him. He, he, he rules with an iron fist. He manages a billion people. A billion people with an iron fist. This is, this is what he says, right, about dictators, about people that have camps. You know, there's a, a group of Chinese Muslims called the Uyghurs. There's a million of them uh, in camps, in camps in China, being either re-educated or worked to death. I don't know, and you don't know, because it's a closed, state-run media society, Right? So if he finds out that Ivanka actually turned evidence, turned state's evidence on him, and they have a falling out, remember that the only reason why Donald Trump talks a good game about Israel is because there were big donors like Sheldon Adelson, right? And uh, he's dead now. And so all that money sort of, uh, you know, went away. And Donald Trump literally decided that Jared was going to come up with a solution that had invaded all other minds in the last 75 years. How to get Israel and, uh, you know, uh, the Palestinians to live side by side in peace. And Jared had figured it out, right? The Abraham Accords. Well, look at the result of that foreign policy. I mean, you could just smell it from here. Smells like rotting corpses, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Israel killed three of their own today. Three of the hostages. They killed their own hostages. Oh, my God. What a disaster. Uh, but this was their... Uh, th so if Ivanka and Jared actually peel off from the Trump train because they've given uh, evidence against Donald, you know that Donald Trump will put Jews... Uh-huh. In camps. Now, where have we seen that before? i got to tell you, people, we're only 75 years out from the gas chambers. You understand that? It's only been 75 years since the gas chambers. So don't delude yourself into thinking that he will be, oh, I don't know, a bene benevolent dictator. <laughs> you know, that he will not put people in concentration camps, that he will not use the U.S. military to round people up, that he will not make people disappear. You know, you know who else disappeared? Alexei Navalny. No one can find Navalny. Isn't it interesting? Navalny was going to run against Putin in an election. He ended up being in prison with no charges that we know of. 
And now he announces he's running again, and Navalny disappears. Fatality. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. 911, what's your emergency? America's healthcare system is broken and people. Fatality. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. It to is. speak with Randy, dial 561 270 3844. That's 561 270 3844. All right, this is just in. Of course, there's very, very little I can say right now. I have to analyze this. <laughs> Obviously, possibly we'll move for a new trial. Certainly, we'll appeal. The absurdity of the number. <laughs> merely underscores the absurdity of the entire proceeding where I've not been allowed to offer one single piece of evidence in defense. You didn't testify. Which I have a lot. So I am quite confident when this case gets before a fair tribunal, <laughs> it'll be reversed so quickly it'll make your head spin. And the absurd number that just came in will help that, actually. Why did you choose not to? Why did you choose not uh, to testify? Very, very little I could yeah. Why did you? Why, why didn't you go on the stand, honey? How come you didn't defend your own self? What, it, what, what was that about, huh? That if I made any mistake or did anything wrong, she was considering contempt. And this judge does have a reputation for putting people in jail. And I thought, honestly, it wouldn't do any good. Oh, that's why he didn't testify, because the judge has a reputation for putting people in jail for lying. For lying. Well, I, I don't even know if that's true. I have no earthly idea. But this is why he decided not to defend himself. Okay. All right, everybody. Do you want to know how long I have been waiting for this? Okay. I, I have been waiting for this this long. Watch. The other well, rumor that I get is there's a kind of revolution going on inside the FBI about <laughs> the original conclusion being completely unjustified. And almost a, 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 a slap in the face of the FBI's integrity. And I know that from former agents. I know that even from a few active agents who obviously don't want to identify themselves. So this has been boiling up in the now, FBI now, since January. I did nothing to get it out. I had no, no, no role in it. Did I hear about it? You're darn right I heard about it. And in I can't even repeat the language that I heard. I just want to make sure make sure we, we're getting that right. We listened to the audio, and you were talking about current FBI agents, at least in that radio interview with Lars Larson. Right. Well, the information I've been getting is from former FBI agents. So you misspoke I, I to got, Lars Larson? I, I, if, I did, if I did say that, uh, that was wrong. I have not, I have not spoken to an on-duty FBI agent about anything. I guess for the last 10 months, I don't know. I, I've, I've actually never talked about this investigation to any current member of the Justice Department or current FBI agent. I don't know if I can make it any clearer right. than that. You can look at my right. telephone right. records if you want. I know that from former agents. I know that even from a few active agents who oh. obviously don't want to identify themselves. I'm out of time. Otherwise, I keep pressing you. I'm out of time. Otherwise, I keep pressing you. I'm out of time. Otherwise, I keep pressing you. I have been waiting since October of 2015 for Rudy to pay a price for the manipulation of elections in this country. That was Rudy Giuliani manipulating the 2016 election for Donald Trump by saying to Fox News there was an October surprise and that he knows this because he was talking to New York field office FBI agents who were telling him that they had Anthony Weiner's laptop and that on Anthony Weiner's laptop were emails between Huma Abedin, his now ex-wife, and Hillary Clinton and that the New York field office had sat on that computer and were preparing to turn it over to James Comey a mere 11 days before we all go out to vote. So that James Comey 
would then have to reopen the Hillary Clinton email investigation, which he did because they sat on the laptop. It's always a laptop with Rudy. Have you noticed that? It's always a laptop. You know, when he had uh, Giuliani Bracewell and he did, uh, you know, this, this national security, you know, cyber law firm, I think he might have learned about laptops and planting them or holding on to them or that everybody's got porn on them or there's always some email on them that you could use to blackmail someone or open an investigation into another, right? I mean, he must have learned that because that is what he did. And that is what the field office was telling him that they were going to do. And Rudy went on Fox and said, don't think we're just going to give up because remember that they were so low in the polls that there was almost a a celebration ahead of Election Day, uh, an inaugural almost, to give it to Hillary Clinton already and not force us to stand on lines anywhere. But then they had their October surprise which did make James Comey reopen the Hillary Clinton email investigation only to declare that every email was a duplicate, meaning it was a ruse, it was a con, it was a fake issue that did not need to be looked at by anybody in the FBI ever, ever, especially not James Comey, the head of the FBI, the FBI director. And I have been waiting for Rudy to pay some price for manipulating our election in 2015. And it wasn't until he tried to manipulate another election in 2020 where he actually found some drunk girl named Melissa uh, Carmone or whatever her name was to, to lie in Michigan, where he gave false testimony to the Georgia state legislature about Dominion machines flipping votes, about Hugo Chavez and a conspiracy theory there, which, by the way, that cost a billion dollars to Fox News, right? People are starting to pay high prices for manipulating elections by lying to the American people, by lying about the character and the, uh, uh, the, the election workers' honesty and integrity, all to serve Donald Trump's grand vision of remaining in power. You have to remember, this is, this is why Rudy went on trial three years after the 2020 election today and the jury awarded $148 million, because he did it again. That's why. He manipulated the first election by using the FBI and some contacts that he had inside the New York field office because he was a prosecutor in New York, because he was a mayor in New York City, and because he had a very large law firm. And he was able to do that. And we all knew anybody that would look at it, anybody that would listen to what he was saying, anybody that understood what was going on. And then later, anybody that read James Comey's book or anybody that, you know, uh, uh, knows what, uh, you know, prosecutors knew because they've read, you know, speaking indictments or because they listen to, uh, you know, legal analysts who have been. Oh, and you know what else just went missing? This is so amazing. So keeping in mind the 2015 ruse, the 2015 big lie, the 2015 manipulation, which is Rudy Giuliani's manipulation, and uh, manipulating the FBI into reopening an investigation that did not need to be reopened, costing Hillary Clinton the election, and costing us our country, costing us the ability to have Thanksgiving with some of our family members anymore, all of that, right? Damage, just damages, all kinds of damages. Everywhere you look, damages. But the idea that this repeated itself yet again in an election and that finally, finally, he's been ordered to make restitution. Finally, finally, he's been ordered to pay money to people he damaged. I mean, you know, I wish that America could sue these people. I really do. I, I, I wish that we could, you know, get compensation for everything that these lying sacks of crap have put us through. Everywhere from the uh, Four Seasons landscaping uh, debacle to this horrible thing that happened to two perfectly nice people, two perfectly s- a small business owner, her daughter, who did nothing but be election workers during the pandemic. 
everybody likes to forget that Seamus and Ruby Freeman and everybody else that showed up to count ballots in this last election, okay, between Biden and Trump, did it during a pandemic, a global pandemic. When there was no commonly available vaccine, where it was before Joe Biden actually distributed tests and masks and and free vaccines to everyone who wanted one. And what did they do? They trashed the efficacy of the vaccine. They trashed Dr. Fauci. They trashed everyone who tried and did deliver not a cure, but a way to cope and deal with COVID. Bastard.